Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video, our third video in our ECG Made Easy series, we'll be discussing sinus, atrial and junctional rhythms and also review supraventricular arrhythmias. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. So let's start with the review of sinus rhythms. Sinus rhythms originates from the SA or sinus node and follow the normal conduction pathway throughout the atria and ventricles. So the rate for a normal sinus rhythm is 60 to 100 per minute as it originates from the SA node which fires at a rate of 60 to 100. The rhythm is regular, meaning the R to R distances or intervals are constant, as what we see here. Look at the R to R distances. The length stays the same, meaning the rhythm is constant. There are P waves present, and we can see one positive or upright P wave in lead 2, for every QRS and vice versa, meaning one to one conduction. So here you have one P wave per QRS, one P per QRS, one P wave per QRS. The PR interval is three to five small boxes, meaning 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. So we'll measure it from the beginning of the P to the Q wave, and it's consistently the same and stays within the normal limits and the QRS complex is narrow meaning three boxes or 0.12 seconds or less if we review here so we can see the QRS complexes are the same and they are narrow so let's review what a normal sinus rhythm looks like on a monitor Here we see a normal sinus rhythm at a rate of 69. The sinus bradycardia looks the same as a normal sinus rhythm, but the rate is less than 60 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular, P waves are present, the PR interval is 3 to 5 small boxes, and the QRS complex is narrow. Sinus bradycardia with rates greater than 50 per minute may be well tolerated by healthy adults. Athletes may routinely be in sinus bradycardia due to an optimal stroke volume that requires a lower heart rate. It may also be associated with vagal stimulation or due to sick sinus syndrome. Pathological causes of sinus bradycardia can include acute myocardial infarction, drugs, for example, blockers, digoxin, and let's say amiodarone, raised intracranial pressure, hypothermia, and also hypothyroidism could cause sinus bradycardia, to mention a few. So let's see an example of a sinus bradycardia on the monitor. Here we see a rate of 46 beats per minute. Sinus tachycardia looks exactly like a normal sinus rhythm, but this time the rate is above 100 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular, P waves are present, the PR interval is 3 to 5 small boxes, and the QRS complex is narrow. Sinus tachycardia can be caused by exertion, anxiety, pain, fever, anemia, hypovolemia, and hypoxia, to mention a few. So let's see what it looks like on a monitor.
Here we see a sinus tachycardia at the rate of 109 beats per minute. What is this rhythm? Correct, it's a normal sinus rhythm. What if this rhythm did not have a pulse? What would you then call this? Yes, it's a PEA or pulseless electrical activity. So never forget to check a patient's pulse as they might have an ECG rhythm showing but no pulse meaning PEA which requires immediate high quality CPR. So let's look at sinus arrhythmia. Here our rate is 60 to 100. The rhythm is regular, P waves are present, the PR interval is 3 to 5 small boxes and the QRS complex is narrow. The only thing of note is the increase in rate with inspiration and a decrease in rate with expiration. Sinus arrhythmia is most often a benign rhythm and common in children. In sinus block, an unhealthy assay node may temporarily fail to pace for at least one cycle. Then the assay node resumes pacing. Note that the P waves before and after the pause are identical since they originate from the SA node. In sinus arrest, a very sick SA node ceases pacemaking completely and this is what you would see on the monitor and this is a little bit more serious. So let's start a review of atrial rhythms. Atrial rhythms are the most common of all rhythm disturbances. It results from impulses originating outside of the SA node. These rhythms affect ventricular filling which diminishes atrial kick, which accounts for about 30% of ventricular filling. So let's start with a premature atrial contraction or PAC. These rhythms originate from outside of the SA node from an irritable spot or focus inside the atria, which takes over as the pacemaker for one or two beats. It may or may not be conducted through the AV node and the rest of the heart. The rate for premature atrial contractions is usually within normal range, but it depends on the underlying rhythm. The rhythm is regular with some premature beats. P waves are present. The PR interval may be normal or prolonged. And the QRS complex is within normal limits, meaning it's narrow. So let's look at this rhythm strip. Immediately, you will scan the strip. And I can see this QRS complex here. And this QRS complex here seems earlier than expected. Because there's a P wave in front of this QRS, and there's a P wave in front of this QRS complex, this rhythm is classified as premature atrial contraction. So for wandering pacemaker, the rate is usually within normal range. The rhythm is irregular as the pacemaker side shifts from the SA node to ectopic atrial locations and the AV junction. The P wave size, shape and direction may change from beat to beat. Here we see four different looking P waves in the same lead. The PR interval is variable and the QRS complex is within normal limits. In multifocal atrial tachycardia or MAT, we see the same as in wandering atrial pacemaker, but the rate is above 100 beats per minute. The rhythm is irregular as the pacemaker side shifts from the SA node to ectopic atrial locations and the AV junction. 
The P wave size, shape and direction may change from beat to beat. Here we see about four different P waves. The PR interval is variable and the QRS complex is normal. Atrial fibrillation or AF is a rhythm that we see regularly in practice. This is a very fast atrial rate arising from many irritable focuses all over the atria. The fibrillatory waves assume different shapes as they are coming from different foci in the atria. The causes the muscle of the atria to quiver or fibrillate which results in ineffective atrial contraction, subsequent decrease in cardiac output and loss of atrial kick. Some of the causes of AF can include ischemic heart disease, alcohol misuse, sick sinus syndrome, post-cardiac surgery, chronic pulmonary disease, to mention a few. The rate for AF is 350 to 450. The rhythm is irregularly irregular. P waves are absent and we see the fibrillation waves and PR interval is not possible and your QRS complex is narrow. Let's see an example of AF on the monitor. Always think AF when you see a rhythm that's irregularly irregular. In contrast to AF, atrial flutter is a rapid, regular fluttering of the atrium. This is the result of one irritable focus or site in the atria, which depolarizes regularly at an extremely rapid rate. So again, the difference between AF and atrial flutter. AF is multiple irritable focuses all over the atria, where atrial flutter is one irritable spot in the atria. And that's why the waves or the flutter waves looks the same. Because of this extremely rapid stimulation, waveforms are produced that resemble the teeth of a saw called flutter waves. The healthy AV node protects the ventricles from these extremely fast atrial rates. So in atrial flutter, the rate is about 250 to 350. We know that the rhythm is irregular. P waves are absent and we see this flutter waves. PR interval is not measurable and the QRS complex is narrow. So let's see what atrial flutter looks like on the monitor. So let's start a review of junctional rhythms. These rhythms originate from the area around the AV node because when the SA node is a press, or fails to conduct impulses. The intrinsic rate of the junctional area is 40 to 60 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular. P waves in this case is absent or hidden. The P waves could also be inverted before or after the QRS complex. The PR interval is within normal limit and the QRS complex is narrow. Accelerated junctional rhythms, our rate is from 60 up to 100. The rhythm is regular. Your P waves can be inverted as what we see here before or after the QRS complex or the P waves could be hidden. The PR interval is three to five small boxes and the QRS complex is narrow. So let's review premature junctional complexes. The rate is usually within normal range. The rhythm is regular with premature beats. The P waves is inverted, could be before or after the QRS complex or hidden. The PR interval 
is usually three to five boxes, but could be prolonged, and the QRS complex is narrow. When you scan the strip, you will notice a QRS complex earlier than expected, as what we see here. But because in front of this QRS complex, we do not see a P wave, and that's the reason for classifying it as a premature junctional complex. So let's start a review of supraventricular arrhythmias. SVT describes all tachyarrhythmias that originates above the bifurcation of the bundle of His. Supraventricular tachycardias include atrial tachycardia and junctional tachycardia. Paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, or PSVT, is a term used to describe a SVT that starts and ends suddenly. The rate of an SVT is 150 to 250. The rhythm is regular. P waves is usually not seen. The PR interval is not measurable. And the QRS complex is narrow because it's originating from above the ventricle. So let's see what an SVT looks like on a monitor. Here we see an SVT at a rate of about 197. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell and please leave an, a comment down below as it does help our channel with the YouTube algorithm. We'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.